Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of TNT Garage and Performance. And today, we're going to be doing a few little things to my 19 Challenger RT to get it ready for power tour. And that includes making a couple visual changes. These Challengers, of course, are best known and modeled after the 70 and 71 Challenger of yesteryear. So I wanted to bring some of that classic look into this newer car and of course this also has the classic package from the factory which includes the white billboards and the challenger script along with the special 20 inch wheels that's not quite enough for me so i want to do some subtle things to kind of bring it around to that cool old muscle car look and that includes putting engine call outs on the hood just like the challengers of yesteryear and changing up the badging in the back of the car along with a few other things now hopefully you've seen other parts of the project on this car where another visual upgrade i did was change from the factory tips and a couple performance upgrades including a full exhaust which includes flowmaster super tens and resonator deletes along with a hearst short throw shifter and pistol grip so hopefully you guys dig this and of course you'll see it on power tour so well, let's get to it. project I want to let you guys know if you stick around to the end I got something little special for you kind of a little movie clip getting ready for power tour that I think you'll enjoy so stick around to the end so I'm gonna add a couple things to my challenger to kind of dress it up a little bit seeing as it already has the classic package with the white billboard the challenger script on the side I figure all the old challengers always had the call out for the edges displacement on the hood typically on the side of the scoop so I went to year one and I picked up a set of these these are 345 Hemi badges that are styled in the exact same way as the old 426 Hemi badge and we're gonna put it on either side of the hood scoop right in that general area yeah it's not a 392 I get it but you know still brings a, a little bit of that old school cool to this car so to set these up properly obviously we're going to measure and i wrap the end of my tape measure and masking tape so when i get it to the edge of the hood we're not scratching anything so right about where i think it looks good which is right before the hood crests out like this i'm going to make a measurement and uh put a piece of tape down so we know where our mark is. So it's sitting right about where I want it. So I'm gonna line it up with the body line of the hood. And it looks to be about seven and a quarter inches back from the edge of the hood. So that's where we can lay our tape at seven and a quarter, flip it around here. Where the back side of that badge is gonna sit so now we just need to center it inside of there so i'm going to measure from both these points within the upper body line and the lower body line and that'll locate my badge right in the center of it
Oh, there we go. I think that looks pretty good. I got it even with this line down here. So the hood actually kind of crests like this. So it's even there, even with the level of the hood. And we got it pretty well lined up. So I like the way that looks. And plus I'll be able to see them from the driver's side. But that adds that nice little, nice little engine displacement call out. Got the Hemi. Of course, everyone knows these have Hemis. But with the classic Challenger script... I think that really adds to the car. Granted, it would have been a little nicer to have the old school RT style dual snorkel hood, but they changed it to this because they want to be more like a scat pack, but of course without the vents here. So I like how that looks. It's pretty nice. All right, now on the back side of the car, we're going to go ahead. And seeing as the rear end of this car is mainly inspired by a 71 Dodge Challenger, we're going to go ahead and get rid of these Dodge letters and in its place put the Challenger script. This is actually, again, from year one, but this is for an E-Body 70 to 74 Challenger. So we're going to remove that Dodge and put this in its place. Now, in order to get this straight, we'll set it off to the side here. So I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and I'm just going to run it right across the bottom of the Dodge letters. There we go. And now we can carefully remove these. Typically to make the process easier, if you have a hair dryer or a heat gun like this, put it on the low setting and just work your way over it. Don't stick on any one thing for any amount of time, but just work over the ladders just to get them a little warm. You don't have to have them boiling. Just kind of Get some heat into them so it'll release the stickiness of the double-sided tape that holds these on. So with a little heat in it, I'm just taking one of my squeegees here and just carefully pull them off. Actually, you can do this with your fingernails. car there by the way we can kind of set up our challenger script we're about where we're gonna want it so about there and then we're gonna measure from the tail light in and get this centered so from tail light to tail light is oh, 38 and a half inches and this emblem is seven inches so that'll do three and a half on each side and then we'll just subtract this seven inches from the total and that'll give us our measurement Seven, fifteen, three quarter. Here we go. Now, before I go crazy and put the new emblem on, I'm actually going to take a little polish and clean up around where the letters were so they don't show through. Just a little touch of polish on an old sock like I have here, and just work her in. Kind of go about around these scratches as well.
Now, there we go. There, can't even see where the letters were. So now I'm gonna clean this with a like a glass cleaner. That'll take up the rest of that residue and then we can lay out our uh, new emblem. All right, one thing to look for as well is look at your two-sided tape before you put your emblem on. You can see that this is slightly misaligned. So you got a couple options. You can lightly heat it up and reposition it, which is probably what I'll do. Or you can just take a razor and trim around it. But I'm gonna try heating this up, carefully peeling it back and putting it where it belongs. Let's go ahead. Make sure we get it centered. There we go. Well, we'll give the surrounding area a little buff, clean all this up. I think that looks pretty good. Really harkens back to the 71 Challenger and it may be a little higher in the center of the tail panel but it's in the center of the tail light so that's really how I wanted to place it I didn't want it down low it was in the center of the tail lights on the original 71 this looks pretty good really brings it into the true muscle car style especially with the classic package on this car well, another touch I'm going to do to the back of the car here, seeing as we got the Challenger script there and the 345 Hemi on the hood, since we went ahead and put the Hurst shifter in it, I've always, always liked the look of these on the back cars. So I've got my tape where I want it to be level, and it's kind of tricky on the back of a Challenger because... The spoiler actually curves down a little bit as well as does the top portion of it. But if you line this badge up with the curvature of the spoiler from the back of the car, it looks crooked as hell. So it's actually uh, level with this part of the taillight, which is less of a curvature than the spoiler, which makes it look straight with the rest of the car. Now, if you went straight from the bottom of this, then it looks tipped up so if you're putting a badge on the back of your challenger uh line it up with the crease on the upper side of your tail light it looks the best in my opinion so i'm going to stick this on and we're going to have a look at it well there we go i think that looks pretty good and if you move far back it looks pretty much when you're looking at it straight when you're looking at it from a distance it's not cocked either way now I did learn my lesson. Uh, I got one of these earlier when I pulled it out of the packaging. It actually peeled the chrome off of it, which kind of sucked. And then I put it on and it wasn't the way I want it. So I lightly heated it up to try and move it. But it uh, took the black out of here, like delaminated it. So this one's good. It's nice and shiny. You can see the difference. So that looks much better on the car. Well, the next thing we're going to do to kind of jazz up the Challenger, other than adding badges and stuff like that, is just another subtle thing, is I'm going to pull these wheels off and clean up the inner hoops and try to polish them out a bit. Once I get them off, I'll show you just how dingy these things get and why I want to get them clean. So, let's get set up and pull these wheels off. Well, as you can see, these wheels are quite corrody on the inside. Uh, they're a, more of a machine finish aluminum on the inner barrel. And the problem with that is when it's clean, it looks great. They don't stay clean for long. They really collect brake dust and those little grooves from the machining. So I could just try and polish it as is. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean the inside of the wheels with uh, quad steel wool, SOS pads basically, with a little bit of soap, maybe knock down a little of that machine finish and get a little smoother and maybe we can't get a little better polish out of it so let's start on getting these cleaned up and then see what we wind up with a 
here's just a small comparison on how much better these wheels look when they're clean. On this side, we have the one I just cleaned. And on this side, it is not clean. So that's going to make a huge difference once we get them polished out to where hopefully uh, brake dust and stuff won't stick so bad. But I'm going to try a couple different things and see if we can't smooth that out even more. Maybe with a very fine scotch Bright pad and then come back, cross it with the steel wool. But we'll try a couple small areas first and see if it's worth doing before trying to polish. quite a bit better <clears throat> one thing I've discovered with these is they're actually clear coated on the inner hoops because when I was polishing it you weren't getting any of the uh, residual black material that you get when you're polishing raw aluminum so I just did a quick polish over them hopefully just that creating a really slippery surface will help keep the brake dust off there so they look good for now let's see how they uh, wind up after a few thousand miles well, now that we got our inner barrels polished, at least the best I can, after I discovered her clear coat, I'm actually been wanting to have white letter tires. Now, there's a lot of options for white letter tires. Uh, there's some companies on the internet that can make you permanent uh, rubber white letter tires that glue in. But to be honest, I'm probably going to replace these tires by fall. They're the original ones. They're not overly low on tread, but it's time for something a little more performance in these good years. So, for the time being, I'm just going to paint the letters just to kind of see if I like the look, for one. Because then I can reverse it if I want to. But if you're going to paint uh, your letters on your tires, there's a couple things you need to do. And one is proper cleaning. As you can see, these newer tires have this ribbed portion and you really want to get these letters clean. So I've just got an old toothbrush and some mineral spirits and dump it everywhere. Wipe it off the wheel. There we go. And just work your toothbrush in and around the areas that you're gonna want to paint that way you know it'll stick in there nice now I've already cleaned this side so I'm just gonna simply use a paint marker and we'll get at it all right you're gonna go over the edges a little bit. So the key here is to put some thinner, some mineral spirits on a rag and just carefully work your way around each letter. You really don't wanna dig in because you'll take the paint out of it. So just light touch. like that and you want to get it before the paint completely sets up so I'm gonna continue doing this I'm gonna lay the first coat on everything and I'm gonna do two coats to hopefully help it last the longest so I'm gonna punch away at this and uh, we'll see what the end result is Well, there we go. 
I'm gonna slap these on the car, quick clean the outside of the wheels, and I gotta change the oil quick before we get a look at how this turned out. So, let's do it. Well, hopefully you guys enjoyed following along on this little journey of visual improvement of my Challenger RT. Now, the reason why I did this is mainly because I can't afford a fully restored four speed 70 or 71 RT, so why not bring the 70s into my 2019? I love the way the little subtle touches like the engine call outs, the white letter tires, and the badging change in the back really bring this around to something more than just your everyday garden variety RT Challenger. So I really think she's gonna pop pretty good because well, we'll be on power tour all the way from Bowling Green to Indianapolis. So we, I hope to see a lot of you on it. I hope to see a lot of cool cars, which of course we're gonna. And if you wanna look back and kinda see the genesis of this car, of course, there's a playlist under the Ultimate Average Muscle Car. Uh, that corner or that corner? It's in a corner. But anyway, you could check that out. You could check out the build of the Checker Gasser project as well in a playlist. I got my rig sitting over here, which has a couple ep episodes in the playlist. And we have the beginning of Project TKZ. If you haven't seen that yet, check it out if you're in a vintage sleds. And of course, like I said before, if you like any of this content, go ahead, like, share, subscribe. It really helps, keeps everything going. And of course, you can see updates and links to videos and find me on Facebook at TNT Garage and Performance and also on Instagram at TNT Garage and Performance. So that being said, till next Sunday, remember, if it ain't broke, fix it till it is. We'll see you soon.